growing up as you know, Max Ray fan, Too Short fan, E40 fan, all that, and then seeing you come up on social media, it's really cool and special. And like the Bay Area is making moves right now, and it's a wave about to happen. It's gonna be yeah. beautiful. How could you explain what's happening up there? It's unexplainable, but if you come to a backyard show, you'll get it. You're listening to Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I'm your host, Will Meldman. Here, as always, with the beautiful Brock O'Hearn. Oh, I'm beautiful. How are you? It's great to be beautiful, man. You look beautiful. You sound terrible, though. I, sound, I, feel, I, don't, yeah, I feel great. Yeah. sound terrible, for sure. <laughs> we are joined tonight with a very special guest, a fellow Bay Area native, which is very close to my heart, a legendary recording artist, La Russell. Come on. There yeah. we go. That was good. I was I was waiting to see where you go. <laughs> he put he put the pressure on, right? Yeah, so, that was good. Yeah, it came out. Legendary good, recording artist. We'll take that. No, man. Thanks for coming on, dude. Yeah. Uh, I dude, on. appreciate you. Uh grateful. Yeah, you got, are you guys in town just for the day or or you came down? We're for... here till Sunday. So nice. We did Nam today, and then I just did an album with Hit Boy. So nice. we want to be shooting all the content for it uh, Sunday. That's awesome, man. Uh, videos or yep. promo? Visualizers, or... yeah. Oh, hell bunch yeah. of videos. Yeah. How much, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how much uh, goes into that from, from your side creatively? Do you help them make everything happen, or is it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, my team is filming all of these, so yeah. we're going to use tomorrow to kind of scout and go find some dope spots, and then cool. just shoot hella shit on Sunday. Nice. Hell yeah. Is that going to be local or is it kind of Yeah, all we're going to be yeah. around here. I that's like to awesome. just, yeah. we'll just be driving. Like I said, we'll point some shit and it's like, nigga, that's a fucking shot, man. Go knock it out. That's cool, man. That's the way to do it. Yeah. That's um, so like improvised location scouting. I love yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. When now it's dope because we be at home and um, like we probably shot like a hundred plus in. We haven't left home really. Like this is just around oh, wow. the neighborhood. Like every time we drive and we're seeing shit, and we like, all right, next day we shoot. We hit now and now and now, and then we just run through them. And these pieces have been going viral, and we haven't left home. That's amazing. That's really. So impressive. Is this your guys' first time leaving and, and doing this? Then leaving home. I mean, we'll we'll do like when I have shows. Yeah. Like we we went to Charlotte recently and we shot some out there. Nice. But usually we don't go shoot in the other places. So yeah, this is one of our first times doing like. This big dump outside. That's great, man. Expanding, dude. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Yeah, that's cool, man. Have you been doing a lot of traveling and touring, or what's the schedule? Last like there? year, we was on the road like crazy. Oh, and okay. um, I don't really love it. So we've been kind of, mm. we've been home a lot more this year, but still out a little bit, but but more local. Um, yeah, I, I feel don't that like for sure. I'm yeah, a cancer. I'm we a just had to I'm go like... from Charlotte, and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to go back to, <laughs> to that side for a while. The yeah. flight's too long and shit. We need a new way to travel. Especially <laughs> after a lot of traveling, right? It's like, yeah. yeah. Touring in general is just whooped. tough on people, right? Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. You be whooped. And then like when you get home, you just want to like sit, but then you got to get work done still and shit. It's just, it, it's tough. I'd rather be at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, I mean, if you don't got to leave, why do it? You know? Right. That's yeah. why we've been building like everything yeah. there, like the venue and every, I'm building everything at home. So it's like, we don't ever have to leave. That's cool, man. Yeah. I saw that in uh, North Carolina with uh, Danny McBride. He brought Hollywood to him. You know, so he didn't have to leave home. He stayed with his kids, his family, everything like that, and started building out sets and filmed the whole show there. Now they're doing all kinds of stuff, right? Damn. That's how you do it, man. You bring, right? it, to, bring it to you. Yeah. Right? Everything Tyler has done too, right? Yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're doing a lot. I was on set of a film in Vancouver too. They're they're shooting so much stuff up there now, and it's really spread out. And yeah, yeah people are localizing it. Yeah, man. Dude, well- yeah, this. I mean, you kind of pick and choose what you want to do and how you want to create, right? There's no, right? there's no limitations to it. And that shit is dope when you bring industry to places where industry don't exist. Like yeah. Vallejo has no industry infrastructure. Like this is the first that shit like this exists. Like the fact that something is happening of this magnitude going out coming from the city is like a first. Like that shit should be. We shouldn't always have to move to like L.A. and Hollywood to. Yeah. To make to get access to that resource. Yeah, man. That's cool. Hundred percent. I mean, you know, one of my favorite, I guess, DVDs back in the day was Trill TV. Huh? Um, I watch it over and over <laughs> again. And like 
you know, literally filming around the Bay Area. Right. Right. Like, right. And do you feel like you're doing something similar in that regard of just Hell crushing yeah. the video content? Hell, and- especially now that we've been docking a lot more. Like, we just, um, we just came from Nam, and a guy came up to me and he was like, I be walking because Joe Stroll, like, every day we do these daily Stroll videos where I just walk and we just talk. And he was like, I'll be walking now because of those videos, you feel oh, me? Wow. So I feel like that was the effect of Trill TV. It made niggas want to be outside. Like it's it's just a different experience when you feel like you get to watch somebody in their element. Yeah. That's cool. Definitely man. in the zone. Definitely right? doing their thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Inspiring fans and inspiring people out there. It's gotta be fulfilling as hell. Definitely. Definitely. I, know, I know we got a lot. We can, we're going to cover and a lot to talk about, man. But I want to know, where did it start for you? You know, like, what was your first interest into making music? What was your influence? You know, like, where did you get started? When did you take the first leap? You know, like, what what is it for you? My intro into music. My parents, of course, of course, like, you grew up in there playing hella shit. But, like, a core memory I remember where I was like, I want to do something music. Well, not nah, even before then. I used to um, my me and my sister had this boombox, and like we used to burn CDs with like instrumentals and shit. That's cool. I actually I don't even think we had the instrumental then. We were just rapping over the song while the song was playing. <laughs> yeah, you feel cool. me? But like that was like some early shit. I remember yeah. I just kind of enjoyed rapping with her, and then like time passed, and I didn't really do it much. And uh, I remember going on YouTube, and I seen this video of Kanye West making this beat. In the studio. Wow. And it took me down this rabbit hole, Ryan Leslie and all this different shit. And I was like, damn, I want to produce. Yeah. And that sent me down its own whirlwind. And I ended up finding the FL studio. And my sister had a boyfriend at the time who came over and just taught me the basics. So I started making hella beats. And then that shit kind of grew and escalated. And I started rapping over them and start writing songs. And it just kind of went that's from cool. there yeah that's awesome man yeah so really like a 360 degree angle on everything right you're like experimenting with every aspect of music feeling yeah. it out and growing from that kind of definitely i mean just art in general like filming shit writing shit writing the music like music is just music is one branch on my tree and mm. the tree just got hella shit like i write books in in Everything. I just do whatever the fuck comes to me creatively. I just be trying to execute it. Well, I love that. What what type of books are you writing? Life books. My first book was called uh, The Bullshit We Tell Ourselves. And then my, my last I book I release is called Limitless. And I'm about to release another mm-hmm. book called Leave Empty. And it just be uh, life shit. Just shit like I be experiencing and little gems I come across through life. And I just put them all in a in a little book. And, you know? That's cool. Share man. it. Yeah. Is your mind just going 24-7? Hell yeah. 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 Sometimes it'd be tough. Yeah. You'd be trying to sleep and that shit. <laughs> and go. I get, yeah, yeah. I get it, bro. I get it. That's funny, man. Even even thinking about how you started with music, too, that was a very similar line with me with movies. You know, I took a... I wanted to do it since I was young because that's what really what raised me and that's what I grew up with. That's what I fell in love with since mm. I was could walk, could talk, any of that. First thing I did was get a video camera. Second, I could and you know film my brothers and sisters, made them do scenes and stuff, man. Hard doing doing movie, uh, uh, like superheroes and stuff like that. Right. Had my little brother run, and we had we had tapes, right? We didn't even have iMovie yet, so it was a video cassette tape. You're filming. I'd have my brother sit in one side, and then I'd I'd have him do a move, and then pause it, and then move him to the other side, and made it look like he ran really fast, right? What? <laughs> Just like little things. What What made you like? Um, did you study something, or you were just that was just me going, just playing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then eventually, I got into. I did like one year of theater, you know, uh, mm. when I was twelve, and that really like I had a teacher that you know, uh, not so much influence from my parents, but this one teacher just paid a lot of attention <clears throat> to me and, and believed in me, mm. and just that he made me think I could be great, you know. That's hard. Yeah, and it was, just, it was a brief time in my life that I had the first time anyone ever did that for me, and I was I was twelve at that time, and I wanted to do that kind of stuff since before I was, since I was five, you know. Since that I was shit on. is so pivotal because yeah. it only takes one person That's to it. do that for you throughout your journey. It really only it yeah. only takes one to do that, and 
it ascends you. Yeah. Like, it's the reason you're doing what the fuck you're doing today. Exactly. <laughs> and then just like what you're doing, man, imagine how many people you're touching through your music, through your work, through your art, through your books, you know, uh, getting people, like you said, getting them to, you just filming your daily activities, inspiring other people to do other stuff, you know, uh, even the walks, right? Like, Fact. it's just, you got to just create, you know? Right. Just live. Yeah. Live like that. That's why I like the documenting process. I love the creation process too, because when we go through visualize it, it's fun like being strategic, but the docking process is just like it's a different form of creation because it creates itself. Like you do nothing but whatever you do and, and the pieces that you get from that, it's like you can't beat that shit. Cause I know mm. I'm gonna have to wake up and be me the rest of my life. So it's like figuring that shit out, it changed everything. That's one of the coolest things, too, though. You're waking up and being you. You know, I feel like so many people put on a face to try and be somebody else. They're afraid to be themselves, right? I, I think to a degree a lot of times. But if you have the courage to stand and say, this is me, dude, that's that's when people make moves. That's when people inspire. Right. They, they do things that are remembered, you know? Right. It's cool. And that's a process, getting to that point. It's, it's tough. a process, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. You, it's it's scary. It's vulnerable. You got to be vulnerable, man. You got to be right. open to it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Creatively, too, you're saying uh, uh, with with all the filming, how, how important is content now, especially now? You know, we kind of talked about it before we started the podcast, right, with uh, just creating in general. But man, with content, how much has that become a part of everything that you do? I think content is as important as it's always been in our lives. You grew up wanting to be an actor because you've seen a piece of content. Like that, it's always had that significance, yeah. but it didn't have the word attached to it. So it's like, man, it's always been important and vital. Like we're, we thrive on great art. Mm. Like we yeah. need things to move us. And that's all content is. How am I going to move you today? Yeah. That's all it is. It's nothing deeper. And it's always existed throughout our journey. I seen Kanye making a vid. That was content. <laughs> and it was like, oh, that changed my life. It, it's yeah. still the same thing today that never changed. Yeah. Do you think there's like a new kind of resurgence with like video and music kind of combined? Like back in the day, there was like music videos and MTV, right? And now it's like social media and music. Yep. Do you think that's like kind of this new renaissance with that? Like Yeah, I feel like it's just transcended into a new form. Like now, I, man, when you come across the timeline and you find something very aesthetically pleasing and the sound is right, it gets you. And yeah. that's always been the thing. I, uh, one of my favorite songs is Call Me. Call me, call me any, anytime, call me. Because the fucking Bride of Chucky. I used to always watch that movie when I was younger and that song was in it. I, I don't know that song from anything else. Right. But that content, that marriage of the visual and the sound, mm. it did it. And that shit, that's, that's how it works today. It's <laughs> like, bro, that's what you, those are the things that you want to make. Like when we shoot some shit that's fire, we all huddled up like, oh shit. Because you, you get that feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a good point. Yeah. It's such a strong. It's a go. strong feeling yeah. that that like, and it's got to be executed right for it to stick. Like you hear songs and a lot of shit throughout your journey, but only certain ones stick to yeah. you, man, bro. And the 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 <laughs> it's the art with it. Yeah. I remember I was watching. Um, it was like an HBO special on Floyd Mayweather. He was about to have a fight, mm. and they had this song by an artist named Rory in it. Um. It's called Devil's Prayer. One of my favorite fucking songs because it it just like they encompass yeah. the feeling, the image, everything, and it's stuck. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny too, because I, I played around with that a lot on different sets with friends, just filming stuff, whatever it may be, even even scoring in movies. The music that you attach to it changes everything. 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 You could put some funny ass music on some shit and it changes the entire yeah. tone yeah. of the clip versus something that's like deep and intimate. Bro. Like it change <laughs> it sets the mood. Yeah. It really changes everything. I we used to have movies without sound. It was insane. Yeah, beforehand. Right? Yeah, that's kind of wild. That like, that's kind of wild. It's crazy. Yeah. I did. <laughs> I'm just thinking of this time, man. We were at, we were on set in uh it was in Kentucky or something, filming something. Uh, it, it was all Vikings and everything like that. So there was this one scene, this big fire. My buddies got around the fire and we all had swords and stuff like that. And we're like battling, right? Just right. Had, like, and it was all slow-mo. It was epic, right? 
And I was just messing around when we got back with the footage and I started putting different songs on it. And like before it was like Metallica and it was all hardcore. It was crazy, right? But then I put, <laughs> I put My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion, you know, from Titanic. <laughs> and it was like, it turned into like this romantic dance these guys were doing. And I was like, this, this is not what we were going for, but it's amazing, you know? Like we were just having fun. Everyone was crying, laughing, you know? Right. You yeah. can really get yeah. your message across. Exactly. Yeah. Like if you want to, Paint a narrative or a certain messaging, like having the right visual and the song. It's, yeah. And it's always been that way. Our yeah. favorite movies is just musicals. It's just visuals yeah. that got the right songs to them. Yeah. yeah. And even like you can go even deeper too to like sound effects and the, or like a villain's voice, right? Yeah. And like those things too will like stand out like Darth Vader's voice, right? Like that everyone james earl jones the legend like that is just so glued to that video and that yeah. image right man it's yeah. so deep um sound design like when you get we used to um film after we filmed the scene we'd go behind the scene with the boom mic and redo it and kind of capture all the audio and just oh, yeah. adding those elements in after like bro, it, it changes everything but it's it's like you're always trying to replicate the world, you know, and, and in the world, mm -hmm. you don't just see things. You see things, you hear things, you feel things, right? And you have to replicate that in, in yeah. your visual. And if one thing is missing that that takes away that feeling, like, it'd be all. You throw it all off. It'd be all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember spending so much time on set, like, getting those ambient tracks, like you were saying. That's just interesting to think about because I, I have this quote that I love. It's, uh, we don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about art that you're creating, right? You're you're showing your perception, you're showing your vision, what you see that maybe nobody else in the world can see, right? But then other people can connect to. You're doing it in your own way and it's cool. And that's why it's important for like everybody to have their own form of art. Like you you should never be trying to create what someone else is creating because mm -hmm. it's like that steals the essence of of everything that's going to be special about yeah. your art. You have to make shit that, because every all of us see the world completely different. Yeah. It's like, if you grow up in the hood, you don't see it as the hood mm. until someone comes and they're like, oh, you live in the hood. And yeah. it's like, I do. <laughs> you know? like, yeah. Because like, you you only see things from your perspective. Yeah. That's on that point, too. You know, like, uh, I've, I found that traveling changed my perspective. You know, we grew up with not oh, yeah. much, we really didn't have much at all. And I had five brothers and sisters and, moving all over the place and, and kind of not so, I mean, they, a lot of them weren't very good areas, but when I started traveling and I started seeing mm -hmm. people in different cultures and different cities, you know, the first place I, I like, I had a friend who was like, where do you want to go? You know? And I made, started making a little bit of money, like just enough to travel on one trip. Right. And I never traveled anywhere. The farthest place I could think, I grew up in California, was New York. New York. I'm like, I want to go to New York. I'm like, dude, I could have gone to Spain. I could have gone to Brazil. I, done, I thought New York, man, but it changed my life. You know, it changed my perspective, and it was it was because of that. Same, a and, trip to New York changed yeah. my entire Did career. It? Yeah, how so? I had um after I had quit my job, mm -hmm. I had got a message. I used to go on Instagram, like anytime I see a music video or any piece of content that I love, I look for the credits and look for everybody, mm -hmm. and then I go on Instagram and message every single person Smart. I found in those credits, right? Great right? And I end up finding this guy named uh, Micah Micah Bickham, mm -hmm. and he worked for. Vivo at the time. And I reached out and was like, yo, I got this, sent my links. And he was like, yo, this shit is dope. Mm. And he was he was new there and they were giving him the opportunity to pitch a series. So he was like, I want to do this series called uh, Liftoff. I want you to do the pilot so I can pitch it to Vivo. Sick. And he was like, I can't pay you, but you could keep all the content that we make. So I end up going out of there, out there and I take some of my homies and it changed my life. Yeah. Like what we did I, I just like I have spent my last money, yeah. but when I was on the way home, I was like, I need to do this at home. I know I could do this, and we just did three live performance sessions. But mm. it gave me just the blueprint and the idea for everything I was doing the next few yeah. years. That's like I, we were talking about. You know, even I've had that where I've had to pay to be in something, right? Like. Sometimes you gotta you're investing in yourself in that moment, right? But look at the value that you got out of that. That's right. invaluable long term. Where it's like, or you could be stressing over the money, and which is a very normal thing to do, right? Or you take the risk and say, I'm gonna spend it and I'm gonna try this and see what happens. I might fall fall flat like fall flat on my ass, but you take the risk. Look, dude, look what happened. You gotta pay your dues. Yeah, you gotta pay your dues. Like 
everything you have to do and sacrifice to become successful is the cost mm. of success. Mm. Right. And you have to pay those dues. And sometimes that shit look crazy. <laughs> but you sure. have to. When, yeah. when you said it clicked, right? Is that how much of that is like songwriting and how much of that is like video production? Is it just kind of all at once? Like just that inspiration as a whole? Everything. Yeah. yeah. Everything. And Everything. From a producing standpoint, I mean, what, what did you do? I mean, what I said, what I've seen, was at least nine albums last year, right? Like, or around. I think nine? we did eight. Yeah, eight, we did eight, eight last eight, year. Right? It was eight or nine. Yep. How it's crazy eight. is that, man? Right. Yeah. Man, I be having and that's that, not one song. I be having that bug. Yeah. And I really, I really try to embrace it, um, yeah. especially because it's funny. I was just tweeting earlier about it because in 2021 I had released six albums, and then wow. that was like unprecedented it was yeah. like he's gonna keep dropping yeah. and every time we had meetings it was like a man you should slow down and this and and if you did and you know just all this shit and i recently had a, a call with a distro and he mm-hmm. was like you know we just don't know if we can get you this because you've done 30 albums and you know it's like it's not there and it's like bro I've amassed a million followers and I live yeah. in a company and I sell out shows. It's like, yeah, I did 30 albums and I fucking made it. You feel me? And, <laughs> yeah, man. and like they, it's just like, it's not as embraced, which is so crazy because in every yeah. other field, they're scoring titles. Like yeah. they encourage you to score more, but in music, it's like, tone it down. But it's like, I, I can't. I can't. That shit just be coming to me, and I gotta share it. <laughs> yeah. And you should. You should keep sharing it, man. And you yeah. should, right? You it's like it's like yeah. I'm painting, and I'm just yeah. like, hey, I just want to show it, what yeah. I paint, right? Yeah. You you should never stop showing what you painted. One of the best pieces of advice I got very early on, before I decided to commit to chasing my dream, right, was I was uh, cleaning this guy's trash out of his backyard. I, I worked for like a trash hauling company uh, at the time, and he was a professor, and he said. I asked him at the end of it, I was like, because I found out he's a professor, I was like, do you have any good advice for me and my brother? I hired my brother too, you were working here. No. Um, man, he said to me, he said, bring your own uniqueness to the world. Mm. He said that to me and I'm like, huh, well, I'm not going to forget that one. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. And it is that, mm. man. It's like, you're doing you, keep doing you. And that's- Bring your it's, own uniqueness to the look world. Look at anybody. For me, obviously, it's easy for me to relate to the film industry because I'm so, in, and me and Will are so in that world, right? When well, all of us to a degree, right? Everyone is to a degree. But look at the people that you can think of that stand out. They're the ones that made a difference, right? There's Tyler Perry. You got, right. you know, Sylvester Sloan. You've got like Taylor Sheridan. You got all these people that are doing stuff that Man. like everyone said, don't do. Even The Rock, he's like, earlier on, he said they told him to, you know, stop working out, stop doing this, stop doing that. And it's the same thing they told me coming in. I'm like, dude, I ain't doing that. And I, because I, even me, my career is obviously not the rocks, but but because I didn't listen, because I didn't cut my hair, didn't stop working out, didn't stop being me, dressing the way right. I do whatever, I hit on social media and that changed my life. If I kept doing that, I would have maybe fit into a little box for a little while that you know wouldn't really gone anywhere. It didn't feel right, but right? because I decided to be me, because I heard that quote. It, Man, it we were me. just uh, me and Splash was talking with his grandfather the other day, and um, the the quote that came out of conversation was you're only replaceable if you're not impactful. Mm. Love that. People only yeah. replace the people who aren't impactful, yeah. but like bringing your own uniqueness to the world is that like, if you make a difference yeah. in anything, if you, no one gets rid of the people who make a difference, yeah. <laughs> you that's know, true, like man. that's always the way that you win. And sometimes making an impact is taking a risk, right? Like, like your New York trip or, you know, like, plenty of other examples it's like you got to put yourself out there and it's being vulnerable it's you know spending resources it's it's taking a risk sometimes right yeah i think so many people even in art even if you do it on a high level you can struggle making and then it gets more stressful right you got more eyeballs and more everything just grows and grows and grows but man but what you're doing though like from my perspective I would say is more important because if you have the ability to put out that much, some people don't put out nine albums or eight albums in, in one career, year in a career. Dude, yeah, exactly. like ever. You know I mean? <laughs> so, and, and to have it be good too, you right? know, like it's different. And that's the thing. Like I don't, um, I don't cheat the process for myself. Like if I don't love it, I don't share it. Mm. So I right. have to make things I love for me to even put it out into the world. Yeah. Like that's an agreement with myself. If I don't love it, it's not coming out. So like, 
for me, it's like I have to share because I enjoy these. I really love them. You know, I'm not making shit that's just like, ah, I just record today. I need to get something yeah. done. I don't even I don't even record often. Mm. It's just like when I finally do get in, in. whatever I love in that pack is we got it. It got to come out. Yeah. And I just think bro, it's a disservice to the world when you're making shit you love and you don't yeah. share it. Like yeah. It doesn't. It don't help nobody yeah. when it's just on your hard drive. Yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, yeah, it, that reminds me when I did this audition this morning, the guy was like, there it is. You're in the pocket, <laughs> you know? And right. it's like, when, when you get in it, man, and you're getting a flow state, whatever it is, just run with it, dude. Run with it. Yeah. Right. And you have to really, you have to really put a blinder on and, mm. and ear, and ear plugs <laughs> in because yeah. everything will try to take you out of that state and even people who've never been in that state would try to convince you that you should a- yeah. operate in that state differently, you yeah. know. But you just have to stay in that state because everyone don't get it. Like yeah. every every player doesn't get in the game and get hot. <laughs> you you yeah, feel me? Yeah. So it's like if you finally get hot, you have to shoot. Yeah, that's for sure. How's it? Uh, how's the impact been on you know on, on people, man, on the fans, on uh, uh, your the how's the response been to your music being shared? Like how how man. has that been for you, man? Is what I'm trying to incredible. Yeah. We uh recently started doing uh testimonials mm. at the end of our rehearsals and That's shows. Cool. Smart. And uh I went to a good friend of mine's house for his birthday and he had everyone do testimonies and I was like, Man, we should do that shit. So we start doing it. And uh I think the first one we did was uh the candlelight show. We did it at like this I did a candlelight show in my backyard, like really, really intimate. And we did the testimonies and they were so special and deep. And it was like, you get to really see how much deeper it is than you could ever really imagine. Like for Mm -hmm. me, it's like I'm writing songs that I love and and expressing my life and what I'm going through. And I like to go make visualizers that I enjoy, but you don't know how that shit affects someone on the other end until they're really on the mic sharing that. And Mm -hmm. just, man, it's so much bigger than... It takes it so much deeper than like a rapper fan connection. Like it's no longer just data and numbers. It's like, yeah. nah, this shit is it's just it's so much bigger. It's yeah. so much bigger. That's gotta be such like a driving force, man, to keep going, right? Like such right. validation right. and you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. It's gotta be such a great feeling. Fact. <laughs> yeah, I think a fulfilled life is if you can even help one person change their life for the better and, and help them. On. So if you're able to do it on a bigger scale than that, which I, even you got the testimonies to prove it already, you know I mean? <laughs> that's everything, man. Right. And that's even anything. That's more of a sign from wherever you want to call it to keep going. Man, and I'll be having to remind myself that that's the win. Mm. It's like that is – you did it. Like once you get that, you made it, right? Yeah. And there's nothing after. And I have to constantly remind myself that when I get in that state of seeking, like, no, bro, that's that's what everyone's truly after. Mm. And that's the thing you try to mask with money when you don't get to get that feeling. Yeah. You're like, oh well, I got really rich. And it's like, yeah, but you're not you're not okay. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's really what it is. And I'll be reminding myself of that, like. Yeah. Man, that's the W. It's that it's yeah. that quote from Jim Carrey. He says, uh, I wish everyone could be rich and famous so they could realize it what it's not the answer. It doesn't it doesn't make you happy. It doesn't you know, it, it you might be having a little bit of fun here and there, right? But it's not everything, you know. Right. That relationship that we have with each other, with our community, with people around us, around the world, there's that's invaluable. Man. A real reason we're here. You and know? when you make when you make real impact it just hits a different part of your human yeah. that you don't get you don't get to tap into until you do something worthy you yeah. know like you you just you don't get that feeling unless you do something that earn you got to earn that feeling yeah oh absolutely dude i mean the bay area has such a great group of like, right. of musicians coming out right. of there right not only hip hop but classic rock right I got the Grateful Dead Warriors hoodie on right here. Um, but, you know, hip hop and rap specifically, when I think of Bay Area artists, it's like each one is also incredibly unique, right? Right? Like, <laughs> they're not only compared to They don't else, exist but... nowhere else on the hemisphere. No. Nope. Like, E40 mm. is a one of one 
<laughs> E40 is from Vallejo and has an accent. <laughs> you can't like that's universal special sauce. You yeah, know, yeah. it's like yeah. he's from Vallejo. Yeah. How does he talk like that? <laughs> you feel me? Like it, that that special sauce is just is very unique. Yeah. Dre is very unique. It's Extremely. like fucking UFOs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is that you know being a part of that like rich culture and like past present future all of it like how do you kind of see yourself in it stylistically man i feel like i'm a gumbo pot of all of our favorite mm. bay area artists one of my favorite Dre songs one of my gumbo. favorite meals man you feel me? like <laughs> i i feel like i'm that mix and balance of all of our favorite bay area artists combined with some of our favorite artists that are just regionally i really right. um Man, I I really feel like we're about to do something incredibly special that hasn't been done in the region in a very long time. Like we haven't we just haven't had this moment that we're about to have, this kind of infrastructure coming out the city. It just hasn't existed yet, you know, and it's beautiful to see because we had so many people late building blocks for me to exist. Like I got a lot of strong backs to be able to stand on and be like, this set the tone. But I, I oh, really yeah. feel like it's a special moment coming out that mm. that we're overdue on. The Bay Area contributes so much to culture that it's just, it's overdue. It's awesome to hear, man. It's so yeah. exciting. Honestly, like growing up as, you know, Max Ray fan, Too Short fan, E-40 fan, all that, and then seeing you come up on social media, you know, years ago, and then being able to sit here and talk to you about this. It's really, really cool and special. And like, I totally agree with you, man. Like the Bay area is making moves right now. And you're obviously leading the charge in my, man, in my it's mind. A wave. So. It's a wave mm. and it's a wave and you could, you could feel it. You could feel that energy. Like it, just when we be moving around the Bay, like, Everybody is so embracive and like it's just it's a wave about to happen. It's gonna be yeah. beautiful. Hell yeah. As as far as that goes, uh, for anybody who's listening, whatever you can share. What what how could you explain what's happening up there, what's going on, or what's next for for the bay and for you? Man, it's unexplainable. But if you come to a backyard show or you come to my compound to a, a rehearsal that we do, you'll get it. Mm. Even if you just go on YouTube and you type in rehearsal and you watch one, you'll get it. It's mm. something that can't even really be elaborated with words. It's just an, it's an experience. Yeah. It's what content does for us when it's like you have to experience it for it to give Give you what it is, yeah. and it's like all you got to do is take thirty minutes out your day and go watch one of those, and you're gonna be like, "Fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> right? Like we yeah. really built, we've we've added our uniqueness. Like I've yeah. curated something at home in hip hop and culture that you can't get nowhere else. Mm. There's nowhere else in the world you could click on someone's live and they're in the nigga's backyard rapping with Spice One or Richie Rich or, you know, you That's, never know. Yeah. It don't exist no more, especially in hip hop. We don't get to see people rapping collaboratively, like together having fun, live, laughing, yeah. like being their human selves. We only get to see them in their superhero uniforms, right? Yeah. So it's like, this shit is, man, it's hit. Like when we look back in 20, 30 years and people are able to go on YouTube and still see those videos, it's going to be like, Fuck, this this was, you know, this was a yeah. special moment that, you know, it's as special as the DMXs and the Jay-Z moments. And it's just having this time to cultivate. But it's it's incredible. We're in the backyard. Yeah. Where did the, where did that spark from? Where did the backyard uh shows come from? Or or Man, I was I was finna do a show in uh Oakland and the venue I was using, the owner calls me before the show and it's just hyper negative. It was one of my first shows and I was doing like tickets at the door and all that. And it was just so much negativity. I was like, I don't even want to do the fucking show no more. Mm. And I hated the feeling of someone talking me out of what I want to do and my passion. I didn't enjoy him having that power because it made me feel powerless, you mm. know? And um, 
After that, I was just like, I have to have my own shit. And it, it, it just, to me, it's like the same as a studio. When I was young, yeah. it's like, I got to have my own studio. This is yeah. the only way it's going to make sense. And that was just the inception. It was like, I have to have my own shit. Yeah. That's cool, man. But- yeah, man. If you're, if you're on a mission like that and, you know, you have all that energy behind you and, and there's an obstacle there, I can only imagine, right? It's like, <laughs> dude, it's, I'm doing this regardless. Yeah. Right. And I would say on that note too, you know, it's YouTube is cool, right? It's great to reach people that maybe wouldn't be able to come there, but there's a power and presence, man. There's, there's something different, a different energy when you show up to something like that. Man, and we, um, I remember when I first started doing the live streams and throwing everything on YouTube, my pops was like, um, you don't think, um, he was like, do you think you should give, you know, people so much here if you're doing it here and you want them to come here? And I was like, Nah, that shit promotional. Mm. Like that's gonna make you. If you see a dope trailer, you yeah. want to go see the movie. Yeah, right. like no one just sees a yeah. dope trailer and like I don't want to see that. Yeah. Like what what that shit does is like us live streaming make people like I gotta go. Like we literally built oh, yeah. we literally built the buzz of the backyard shows by showing people clips of the backyard shows. Yeah, yeah. Right, the fact that you can go watch a backyard show is the reason you want to come to one. Yeah, that's cool, man. So. I'm a total film nerd and I like love the fact that, you know, vid, like videos and videography is such a big part of what you're doing. Right. Who are some of your favorite directors? Like what are some of your favorite films? Like how did that kind of start to, I know we kind of covered how you got into shooting, but like when it comes to, are you a cinephile? I like, don't, um, I don't really know a lot of directors by name. Um, I just know movies I love. But Perfect. or companies that start. I remember um, Jason Blum, Bloom or Blum, Bloom. I, dude, I've heard it. I've right, I hear it both ways. Way. Right, yeah. Blum yeah. but Blum I was going, man. Me and uh, me and my daughter's mom used to have like a fucking Cinemark pass, so we was always yeah. going to see. I love yeah. fucking movies, right? And I love horror. And Blumhouse was on a fucking run. It was like, <laughs> what the fuck? They doing everything, and I kept seeing it, and it was like, I love their shit, and they get. Like horror is so intricate because the sound has to be right, oh, the yeah, lighting, yeah. the the like every. <laughs> I have really. It. I start I, I, for a year because I wrote a I wrote a couple horror films, but I wrote like a really oh, dope oh, one wow. based on Vallejo. So I was just studying how you know things had to be executed. So Blumhouse, I love their shit. Um, I love Jordan Peele shit. The, yeah. the Monkey yeah. Paw, I think it is. Um. I don't know who produces these, but I really love the uh, Knives Out films. Oh yeah, that's they're um, always shot really well in the story and shit. He 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 did the Last Jedi, um, the director. Oh yeah, uh, was it Guy Ritchie? No, no, close. It's uh, I dude, I know I've literally seen his shit. shit I love. Ryan Johnson. Came. Mm. Ryan Johnson. Yeah, yeah, Rian Johnson. Rian Johnson. It's like R I A N. Yeah, but yeah, 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 like movies. That shit, and then um, music videos. Hype Williams, of course, was a big like all of our fucking iconic music videos that we remember. It's like Hype Dude. Williams shit. Um, I love some of the young. I love Cole Bennett shit. Like he always does <laughs> new intricate shit. But yeah, I just be watching. Like I don't really. I just like I see some shit and I'm like, wow, that shit is really fucking dope and. Yeah. yeah, you know, I become a fan through that. Yeah, just, I love that you love horror films, though. That's awesome. Man, that's yeah, my, my mama used that. to have me up. Man, I used to be up like this. Yeah. I fucking love horror. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you have a... I remember I got a couple moments with, with horror films growing up as a kid that maybe I shouldn't have been watching, but I'll man. never forget. Do you, do, you, <laughs> there, do, you, do you have moments like that, or do you have a... Hell yeah. What's a you remember, one? like, there was an insurgence oh. where paranormal films was the wave. Yeah. Like somebody figured out, hey, we ain't gotta do shit. <laughs> <laughs> somebody was like, we ain't gotta do shit yeah. no more. It was fucking uh paranormal activity. activity yeah. I think it was a, was like but the you kick, know. Yeah. and it just yeah. kind of went from there. Security cameras. You know what was because really... everybody thinks they they it's a door shut or something happened around the corner. Everybody oh thinks, bro. God, we all got that, that shit feeling, bro. Used to have me the fuck up, and then um conjuring. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, that was conjuring yeah. was man. That was our shit for a minute because it yeah. was. It was like that was the first scared the hell out as of an adult. I think even Man. that was the first movie I watched. Where I was like, as I think it was the first time I actually got scared from a horror movie. Conjuring was good. I was fun. actually like, I, I like slept on the couch that night, dude. I'm like, we're not Did going. Did y'all to my room. watch? Um, 
It's about when the two kids go to their grandparents' house, but it's not their grandparents. Oh, what? I know. I know they, what you're talking it's about. It's a good oh, ass. Really? So their mom sends them to like <laughs> their the parents' name. house on a train and shit. And then they end up getting there. And she's like, oh, you stay on their grandpa. She never sees them. And then she finally sees them. She's like, that's not your grandparents. And it's like the whole time they they don't. Oh, they don't even tell you, huh? I forgot yeah. the fuck. It's, it's a good um, ass one, though. M. Night Shyamalan did it, right? It's the Sixth Sense. I'm pretty sure I don't that's think, an M. Night. I don't think this one was. M. M. Night just did a movie called Old, though. Did y'all see Old? Oh, yeah, no, on the beach. No. On the beach. Bruh, that shit is great. Yeah, you like, yeah. I see it. He's, he's great. He's I, a go, yeah, man. Grew up I be with his I stuff. be trying to like get in that bad. I like writing shit like that. Like I Hell wrote yeah. a uh, film called Nightmare on Mare Island. Nightmare Island, based on Vallejo, based on Mare Island, and I feel like Fuck it's gonna yeah. fucking sick. We gotta talk about these short film scripts. I'm trying to figure out what the name of that movie is. Um, what what's your favorite? What's your favorite horror movie? Is it Chucky? Because of the song. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. I know it's hard to pick a favorite, but like yeah. Exorcist, that one scared the hell out of me for sure. Mm. Exorcist, good. It got me when I was little. Really? It was yeah. Good. Well, I had like a cousin that went outside in the backyard in my in my room. I didn't even know he was there and just started banging on the door. I'm like, <laughs> I think like the first six years movie old. I had seen was like uh, probably Child's Play or H2O Halloween uh, H2O. Yeah. Nice. Halloween, dude. They did it. They did it. They figured that out. Still doing it. it, man. Still doing Dude, it. Dude, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis still killing it. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, they're crushing, man. Dude, I watched a Spanish film, Evil Lurks Here. I'll put it up. Top three scariest movies I've ever mm. seen. Like, it's possession. It's animals. And, like, dude, I watched it with my friend the other night. And, like, I've never... I don't think uh. I've been that scared watching a movie. And... and 20 years maybe what was that movie that we watched uh i think it's like australian directors or something oh Oh, babadook that that was australian babadook it's the one where where they have the hand and they get at the very end oh nigga (laughs) that shit good as fuck that's a good one Um, that shit was good as fuck bro that was a great movie and it was like scary it was intense yeah yeah that was (laughs) That one had me tripping yeah, out. Yeah, that was good as fuck. <laughs> yeah. I forget the name too, but and um, it, it's not a scary <laughs> movie, but um, y'all seen Parasite? Oh yeah, oh great yeah, movie. yeah, great movie, phenomenal. Absolutely. South Korean, absolutely. Oh man, I don't want. I mean, we we gotta jump. We can keep going on on horror. Yeah, yeah sorry, but right. but I got us um, down a rabbit hole. Uh, tell us about uh your company, man. Good company. Yeah. Good company. How, where, how, where did it come from? Like, uh, what is it? And you know, tell us more about it. I don't remember like the exact inception, but I yeah. know I got a logo from 2016, which is like the first shit. And uh, I remember I just like the saying, "Your mama say you judge by the company you keep." Mm. And, you know, I like pennies is like undervalued type shit, underdog type shit, and um. Yeah, I don't re- really remember why I I made it in particularly, but um, it was just a home. It just felt like since high school, I've always kind of made like just groups for me and my homies to kind of exist within. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. Um, a good company will, company was one of those, and it was just like I was just doing. My homies do art. I do art. We make cool shit. And it's like, let's all put it under here. You feel me? And yeah. and it just kind of built out. It started building out into like a full service thing. And then I met Tieta and newer people mm-hmm. who helped me with the marketing and social media. And, that, and it just kind of built into this resource hub. That's cool. I think coming together as creatives too is like so important. Like, we talk about that a lot, like that team building process, right? Just Bruh, like, I love, um, we'll be filming and it'll start with one idea from <laughs> one person. And then everybody, you just start seeing the boom, 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 boom. And it and it ends up just all those hundred ideas make yeah. this one big thing. It's like a fucking house. A house is made up of 20,000 pieces of material to make one house, you know? And that, yeah. that's yeah. how it feels when you're working with your homies. And you can, and one person can build a house, yes, but... A, to build a real house or, or to get it done correct or in the way that you'd want or envision something like this. Not one dude's not building this. And it, you it need a feels, team, but you know? if you, 
<laughs> if you if you built the whole house alone and you got to the end and you looked at that house and there's no one to high five besides you, yeah, yeah, it's just like <laughs> uh, unless you really just want to be alone, right? You know, right? yeah, it's it's who you share with, man, right? And yeah. that's any good. I mean, great songs, right? Great film, great companies, man. great pro- like things that have changed the world have come from. Yeah, sometimes there's one person spearheading, leading the way, right. but at the same time. If you're a good leader, you're also able to take, you know, advice and opinions and be, be not yeah. be not let your ego take over, but say, I'm hey man, man let the best idea win and let's do this man. collaboratively to make something great so everybody rises. You know, all your fingers are useful. Yeah, it's like bro, you need all of them. Oh, but this little guy. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I like nah, that. That's cool, man. How uh, I know there's there's obviously been a lot of highs and a lot more coming, but. How uh, what have been some lows or what have been some difficult challenges that you've had to overcome uh, on your journey? If if you want to share, being broke, yeah, that's one of them. It's always yeah, yeah that's yeah. always a challenge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, really, just I mean, nothing's really a low, you know. Like it's just a part of mm. the journey and the process in life. Life kind of takes you through that, um, and shit. Every everything, everything has duality to me. Everything I experience has a high and a low. Mm. It's like me making a lot of money gives me a high, and it also comes with a low. Like all of mm. this um, pressure and and everything that comes with Taxes. making money, like everything, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. everything that yeah. comes, everything that comes with being successful. Like yeah. becoming successful is a high. It's like, you know, you, you want to succeed, but it's also like, there's so many things that come with that shit. And, and it's always a sacrifice, right? Like your cost of success sometimes is your, um, your privacy, your freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everything, you know, you, you have changes. To, so every everything I experience in life has like this high and low, and I'm always figuring out, you know, I always got to figure out how to navigate and yeah. get to a space where, you know, I understand it and I'm okay with, with the choices I made. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's life too. Life is filled with ebbs and flows, right? It's not, right. it's never linear. It's, all, it's And that makes it not boring also, right? Yeah. I love looking at it that way too, man. Like yeah. that was so well said with that duality part of it of like, you know, it's all a journey, so it's all about how you look at it, what you're going to take from it, and, you know, moving forward for sure. And I think a lot of those lows, too, especially for an artist, you know, like, I have I have known broke very, me and, me and being broke have been very close right. for a long time. <laughs> like, I, I know. Um, and it, it changes you in a way, you know, and it, it changes your perspective and then your gratitude and then the way you Man. respond to things and, you know, we had a uh, over a year where we only ate Top Ramen because that's all we could afford, right? And you sit there and you're like, I, for, I don't know how in the hell I still like Top Ramen right now, right, but it's right. damn good, right? But it, but it's like, I don't want that. You know, I don't want that for me. I don't want to have to, you know, steal food or beg somebody right. to buy me, you know, groceries or something like that. And it sucks. It's, but at the same time, like, if I didn't your, have that scale, man, yeah, right. you know, and also it knowing what it's me. like to be in those shoes, dude, you know, it's like not everyone gets that. And I'm grateful for those experiences i'm grateful because it taught me lessons right and life is filled with these lessons and failure for me and what i've adopted you know it's it's, it's only the opportunity to more intelligently begin again you, you take that it's not a loss man every great that's ever been has failed right over and over and over to become right. great right for sure you fail a hundred times more than you succeed but that's the difference between a winner and a loser is just a loser that went one more time right right it's somebody that doesn't quit and that's where great art comes from man really well elaborated. Yeah. <laughs> well elaborated. I'm in that flow state. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, man. <laughs> Sitting with you, man, talking with you, listen to your mind, man, listen to your process, your journey. It's like it's inspiring. It's exciting. I'm excited for you, bro. Like Whoa. you have a you know, they don't see it, but you know, you have a whole entourage with you of people you yeah, can tell just love homies. you, man. Yeah. You guys are doing cool stuff, you're doing great stuff, you're out here doing stuff. Man, that that'd you know? be my thing. I I'd like to execute. Yeah. I don't like the talk about it i'll be mean, like yeah i gotta i gotta get it done because it's just so much easier to show you you feel me like it's yeah. so much easier to show somebody and man that's really the letter that's why i was asking you and then i'm like man do you shoot an indie or do you go pitch it first because i've been i've been in that state where now i'm like 
man, just get it done. And then that that's yeah. all the pitching and proof that you need. You know, even the conversations you get to have are different when you've done it versus you telling someone you're going to do it. It's crazy how that <laughs> is, right? Like, dude, I look back at myself sometimes. I'm like, I just, I could have done that, right? Or like, but it's, mm-hmm. you're right, man. I think that's why, like, we were talking about earlier, like, mentors and stuff. And whether it's a mentor or a friend or something, like, one little piece of advice or conversation you know, Mm -hmm. can lead to so many different things, not referencing what we were just discussing, but like just in general for people out there. Right. And it's like, that's why we always try to say, you know, you never know how you're going to affect someone's day. So just always, you know, try to stay positive. Right. Yeah. Sounds cliche as shit, but, but it's that impact, right? It's just like, I've always called them, you know, for me in my life, defining moments, you know, it's like, right. That video with Kanye that you saw is a defining core moment. Memories. Exactly. A core memory that you latched on. Core, yeah. core, core memory is from fucking um, inside out. <laughs> Content. Yeah. 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 That's it, man. That's it. That's the way you get it to stick. Yeah. Yeah. And that philosophy of I'd rather show you than tell you, you know, I can't tell you, you already know how valuable it is. I can't even begin to tell you how valuable it is, especially like, I can't tell you trying to come up in Hollywood, trying to make a way, try to book anything, trying <laughs> right. to tell someone I'm an actor when I've never acted in anything. You know, right. I'm like, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. But at the same time, you, you across the world, there's so many people that will say, oh, I'm, an, I'm, I'm a writer, you know, I've written, well, you've been writing for eight years, but you never wrote a word, you know, or they'll talk man. about it, but they won't do it. Right. And it's scary. You know, success is scary for people, man. It's scary for a lot of people uh, to take that leap, to get out of your comfort zone where you're at, you know, and- but. You know, sometimes I'm extremely grateful for, like, the process I had to go through because I used to be in meetings trying to explain everything I'm doing now. And it's just, it's like, you can't explain some shit that hasn't been done. (laughs) It's just very difficult for anyone to believe you. And it forced me to have to go get it done just so I could be like, this is yeah. what I'm talking about, and yeah. this is what I need for it, you know? Hell yeah. <laughs> With that position, too, let's say you're in that meeting. Well, you talking about it in the beginning when you have that meeting and everyone thinks you're crazy or they don't understand it or they, they, they don't identify with it, whatever the thing is, you went and did it. Now you can show it, you can prove it, and now you're in that meeting, it's a different meeting. It's a much yeah, different a meeting. Different you know, meeting. It puts you in a different seat. Right. And I think that's important, you know, and I, that's something to think about, too, with people that are out there trying to create, trying to make stuff, trying to make a dream happen, doing something. It's not easy to build a dream, man. There's no guarantee. There's no, you know, see real, like, there's no real path that you could follow the it's blueprint. No blueprint. Yeah, and right. it could take you on any which way. And that's really, it's not a linear thing. It takes you every way. You know, like this conversation we're having is going to change. Art. Um, yeah. Like, there's no one way to win the game. Yeah. With art, yeah. there's... There's a million ways to get a trophy. And you just have to figure out one that works for you. Dude, when I'm like (laughs) editing a video or something, I just get so lost and like I could change the background and then I can change the color of the background and then I can make the clip shorter or long. Like my just I go crazy until I'm like, no, 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 like this is good. Like I'll I'll go ask Brock his opinion, right? And then I'll, you know, right workshop it. But yeah, creativity is a bitch. It's like it's ch- it's like chasing perfection, but you never there is no perfection. You can't you can't right. achieve that, you know. And the beauty in that too is the same thing as us in our in our human life and our experience here. It's that's what makes us great. Is none of us are perfect. How Man. boring would perfect be? Right. You know. Right. It's that imperfection that makes someone beautiful. Their little quirks, the way they think, right. the, the music they put out, like the way they see the world. You know, like that's the stuff that's cool. Right. Yeah. Hell yeah, bro. Yeah, man, this is dope. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, man, what's uh? So, you, so you got the backyard shows. You got all. You're gonna change the world. You know, uh, <laughs> right? What What are some exciting things coming up for you? What are some things that we can help promote for you, dude? Is there anything like? Man, I'm um, I've just been on a musical run lately, and I've been making a lot of shit I love. You know, mm-hmm. um, we're about to drop a Hit Boy album. We just nice. finished Hell yeah. a couple weeks ago. Congratulations. And it's about to come out. And um, yeah. it's going to be a moment. It's a really dope moment for me because um, Hip Boy made niggas in Paris, you know? And me and my pop, when I was young, and used to ride around when I was with him on his runs. Yeah. And we used to play that 
shit that whole album, Bro. but that shit used to always hit. And it's like for me to get to a point now where we're in the same studio creating mm-hmm. things together and my creative opinion has been valued and respected for what I do. It's just like, yeah, man, it's that reminder yeah. like, bro, everything and anything is possible if you yeah. go for it. Like, I would have <laughs> never imagined when I was watching those fucking Kanye videos, you know, that yeah. I'd be at this point. But it's like, I did nothing but the work. That's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it right there, man. Dude, it's, that's it's, so cool. I'm so excited for you, man. I can't wait to hear that. It's going to be great. Yeah, yeah it's going to be great. It's that's cool, man. And, you're, and you are that, and you're going to be that for, for other people too, man. You know, Come moving on. forward. How cool is that? Right. <laughs> I, I, I've, I can definitely resonate with that, man. I've worked with some people where I was like, bro, I watched you growing up, and I'm standing across from you doing that. What are you talking about? You can't beat that feeling. No. You can't beat that feeling. And those are, it's one of those earned. Feelings like you yeah. have to work your ass off to even get that. Yeah. But it's it, you can't beat that feeling. Like yeah. those are the ones you live for. Like you have to go make things happen. Yeah. Man, the life of a dreamer, man. Come on. It's good. Yeah. That's his episode title. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was it. <laughs> yeah, there we that go. That was it. Boom. All right, man. Well, how we we've been we cruising, right? That was good. Yeah, yeah I think it was good. Yeah, that, that was, was great. Good. Yeah, yeah. Thanks nice. For in, of man. course, of Appreciate course. You, I, I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I love right, it. Man. I love it. Thank you for watching Studio Twenty Two. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow our socials at Studio Twenty Two Podcast.